Okay, hello again. So today we are going to discuss about one topic of linguistic and it is about pragmatics. And pragmatic is the most interesting part, interesting branches in linguistic because it's study about the language use um, in relation with the context, whether it is linguistic context or or physical context. So here I'm going to be talking mainly about uh, speech act in pragmatics. So please be careful. Uh, please um, uh, wait a minute. So so we are going to be talking about how does the language use influence uh, the listener or the hearer. So what is actually speech act? That's what we are going to discuss here in this uh, video. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so today we are going to be discussing about what is speech act. So speech act, as you can see, this is from the word speech and also act, which means there is an action happening after someone's speech. Okay, so here, speech act theory was first proposed by... Uh, by Jane Austen and in 1972 in his book, How to Do Things with Words and has been developed by Sedley. If you are going to analyze something using speech act, then you have to know this two person, Austin and also Sedley. They believe that language is not only used to inform or to describe things, but it is also often used to do things. The main point, the main point here is that that speech can be used to do things or to perform an action. That's what we need to remember about speech act. Okay, so here speech act refers to action performs via utterances. So there is an action that is being performed using utterances. For example, listen to me. Yeah, listen to me. When I said listen to me, this is an act of speech. But then you need to listen to me because you have uh, listened to my order that you have to listen to me. Yeah, jadi ada uh, kemudian kalian akan mendengarkan karena saya tadi menyuruh kalian untuk listen to me. Jadi ada action yang kalian lakukan setelah mendengarkan perintah dari saya. That's what we what that's what we mean by speech act. Uh, actions such as requesting, informing, and then commanding or questioning and declaring. Yeah, declaring and etc. So, for example, here there is a boss saying, You are fired. Kamu dipecat. It is declaring someone that he is no longer a worker. So here, the word you are fired, the speech you are fired, it is caused an action, an action from a person who, who was an employee before become an employee. Jadi speech act di sini adalah kalimat atau kata atau utterances yang digunakan oleh seseorang yang kemudian dia itu mempengaruhi action. Bahwa oh ya utterance di sini dia mempengaruhi action bagi the hearer. Kalau di sini you are fired, ini mempengaruhi seseorang dari awalnya dia bekerja kemudian menjadi tidak bekerja because you are fired gitu ya. Oke. Okay. Kemudian there are some classification of speech act. Austin divided three uh, classify the speech act into three categories. The first one is called as locutionary acts. So what is locutionary act? Locutionary act is the speaker utterance. So for example, when when the boss said you are fired, that is the locutionary act-nya adalah you are fired. Karena itu adalah the action of uttering something. Utterances-nya atau speech-nya yang diutarakan oleh the speaker itu dikatakan atau dimasukkan dalam kategori locutionary acts. For example, do you smoke? When I ask, do you smoke? Ini adalah locutionary act-nya adalah kalimatnya tersebut, utterances-nya. Do you smoke? This is question. ya. Do you smoke? Apakah kamu merokok? And then the second classification of speech act, there is locutionary act as the speaker utterances. And locutionary act refers to the speaker intended meaning. Apa sih maksud dari speaker yang ingin disampaikan dengan bertanya, do you smoke? Apakah dia memang bertanya, apakah kamu merokok? Nanti jawabannya bisa yes or no. Atau ternyata dia di sini, do you smoke? Here ternyata 
uh, intentionnya speaker intention adalah to question to offer the cigarette oh mau memberikan atau menawarkan cigaret menawarkan rokok do you smoke do you want some do you want one of my cigarette itu maksud dari si speaker here we can see that when someone say do you smoke there is a locutionary act do you smoke and there is a locutionary act the intended meaning is to offer the cigarette yeah and the third one we have for locutionary act per locutionary act is the effect of the hero reaction we can say the hero reaction or the effect of the locution react toward the hearer so the hearer after listening to the utterances to the locution react what is their reaction it can be they will accept accept the offer or they can refuse the offer here the reaction can be no thanks i'm not smoking Oh, ternyata reaksinya adalah dia menolak. No thanks, tidak, saya tidak merokok. Artinya dia menolak, Re, uh, rejecting the offer. So, in a speech, whether we speak directly or indirectly, there are three main categories in our speech. The first one is locutionary acts. Second one is our intended meaning, illocutionary act. And what is the hearer reaction? What is the effect of our speech toward the hearer? Apa sih reaksi dari hearernya adalah perlocutionary act. That's why analyzing speech act in in a conversation or in a dialogue or in a movie or in novels are very interesting because you can see three different things. Locutionary acts-nya apa, illocutionary acts-nya apa, kemudian perlocutionary acts-nya juga bagaimana. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, according to the theory, locutionary act is the act of saying the literal meaning of the utterances. Jadi ini adalah literal meaningnya. We can say this is also the semantic meaning. Kemudian illocutionary act is the extra meaning of the utterances produced on the basis of its literal meaning. Illocutionary act here refers to the the speaker intended meaning. For example, by say by asking, "Do you smoke?" She or he actually doesn't really ask whether he or she smoke or not, but she actually asks whether he or she, the hearer, wants to have the cigarette from her or from him. And then prolocutionary act is the effect of the utterances on the hearer depending on specific circumstances. So this is the, um, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so I was saying about the theory of speech act. So there are three elements of speech act, locutionary, illocution, and also prolocution, yeah. Okay, let's moving on to the next slide. So here, the most interesting part of analyzing speech act is actually the illocutionary act. Why it is interesting? Because illocutionary act is, we are going to analyze the speaker intended meaning, which is sometimes different from what he and she actually speak. So here, uh, illocutionary act realizes the speaker communicative intention, we can, which can be hundreds of different kinds. It can be asserting, it can be stating, it can be reporting, complaining, promising, for example, I would like to meet you next, next Monday, for example. It is promising, even though, even though the statement Meskipun kalimatnya itu berupa kalimat statement, tetapi maksudnya di sana adalah promising. Another like inquiring, warning, suggesting, requesting, thanking, and greeting, and etc. So, illocutionary act can be made fully explicit if we use performative verbs because it is express, explicitly expresses the speaker communicative intention. There are different type of illocutionary act if you want to see here. I've done the same thing. Saya juga pernah melakukan penelitian di uh, di tipe yang sama. Dulu saya melakukan penelitian yang khusus deklaratif illocutionary acts. Jadi saya hanya fokus pada satu saja yaitu uh, fokus pada satu topik saja deklaratif yaitu uh, illocutionary act yang berupa bring a state of affairs into existence by declaring it. 
for example, jadi declarative uh, illocutionary act itu adalah ketika tadi seperti you are fired atau you declaring something, I declare you atau I pronounce you to be wife and husband. Jadi declaring itu akan mengubah statement of uh, A person statement dari mungkin tadi dari employee menjadi unemployed dari uh, single menjadi wife and husband itu adalah declarative atau misalnya dari orang yang free kemudian menjadi uh, orang tahanan misalnya nah itu adalah declarative declaring something oh ya mengubah status seseorang itu dari a ke b atau sebaliknya. So there are different type of illocutionary acts. Here there are just a few example. Ada assertive assertive illocutionary act in which it is commit speaker to truth of express proposition. It is like a belief, yeah, belief. Uh, you believe in something like the world is flat. For example, when there is someone say the world is flat, he he or she make an assertive illocutionary act. Jadi ada assumption that is being atau ada belief yang dia katakan di sini. Kemudian ada directive, it is attempting the speaker to get here to do something, untuk menyuruh seseorang melakukan sesuatu. For example, contohnya, uh, open the door please. Nah, open the door please, itu adalah, uh, illocutionary act-nya adalah open the door please. Illocutionary act-nya adalah menyuruh seseorang untuk membuka pintu. Nah, nanti perlocutionary-nya adalah apakah hearer-nya mau men menerima atau menolak request tersebut gitu ya. Direktif menyuruh seseorang untuk melakukan sesuatu. Another example itu tadi yang direct ya. Ada yang indirect misalnya it's it's hot in here. It's hot in here. Saya mengatakan it's hot in here tetapi sebenarnya saya menyuruh seseorang itu untuk membukakan pintu atau mem, atau turn on the fan and extra. Kemudian ada commissive utterances or committee uh, commissive elocutionary act. It is commitment of the speaker to some future course of action. Nah, ini promise ini maksudnya nanti ada di commissive ya. Misalnya promise I promise I'll marry you on 2025 for example. Kemudian ada expressive It is to express psychological state about the state of affairs. Biasanya untuk mengekspresikan feeling and etc. Itu lebih menggunakan yang ekspresif. So here there are some different type of illocutionary act in which you can try to choose one of them. Kalau kalian akan melakukan mini research itu pilih satu saja topik kecil. Misalnya oh ya hanya yang komisif saja yang uh, yang ingin saya analisa di di movie apa atau di novel apa itu boleh sekali dilakukan seperti itu. Okay, next. For example, here there I'm giving you the, another example. It's toughy in here. Ini sama dengan it's hot in here. Yeah. The locutionary act here is uh, the literal meaning. It's toughy in here. Oh, sumpek tuh di sini kok sumpek sekali. Nah, dia maksudnya adalah there is isn't enough fresh air in here. Tetapi maksud terselubungnya adalah the intended meaning here. It is the request. Uh, The, the speaker is, requ is requesting the hearer to open the window or turn on the fan and extra. Saya ingin the hearer itu untuk membuka jendela. Meskipun kalimatnya di sini bukan kalimat direktif sama sekali, tetapi hanya kalimat statement yang mengatakan it's toughy in here. Perlocutionary act-nya bisa berupa accepting the hearer can accept the, uh, the request or rejecting the request. Okay. Um, This is also generally known as locutionary force of utterances because it forces someone to do something or directing someone to do something. Another example, I have much money at now. I have much money at now. Locutionary act-nya adalah I have much money at now. Kemudian illocution-nya adalah ternyata an act of offering the hearer to ask for money or borrow some money or have a dinner treat or depending on the context. For example, there are two friends conversing like uh, I have the first person like say I am broke right now. Kemudian yang satunya mengatakan I have much money at now. Nah, maksudnya di situ adalah dia bisa meminjamkan uang. Nah, di situ perlocutionary act-nya bisa hearer ask for some money or ask for a dinner treat, tergantung konteksnya. Ketika si speaker yang pertama mengatakan I am broke, kemudian dia mengatakan I have much money at now, itu berarti orang yang keduanya memberikan uh, kesempatan untuk orang yang pertama untuk apakah kamu mau pinjam uang saya, I have much money at now, atau do you want me to buy you some dinner, or etc. Nah, ini adalah contoh untuk... Uh, analisa speech act. 
there are two type of speech act. The first one is direct speech act. Direct speech act adalah speech act yang langsung sesuai dengan literal meaningnya, tidak ada makna terselubung di dalamnya. Kemudian yang kedua ada indirect speech act, ada yang tidak langsung maknanya. Contohnya tadi yang it's stuffy in here itu adalah statement, tetapi kemudian maksudnya adalah untuk menyuruh seseorang melakukan sesuatu. Nah itu indirect, ada makna terselubung, makna lain dari makna literalnya. Kalau yang direct speech act itu memang sesuai dengan makna aslinya secara literal. For example, ada kalimat tanya can you play a guitar kalau kalimat kalau dia direct speech act maka dia kalimat tanya ya untuk kalimat tanya it is to to ask whether that person being asked whether the hearer can play the guitar or not ya, itu hanya untuk pertanyaan apakah kamu bisa main gitar atau tidak jawabannya nanti yes or no tetapi kalau indirect speech act dengan menanyakan can you play a guitar itu bisa bermaksud bahwa Bisakah kamu memainkan gitar untuk saya? Request again ya, to ask the hearer to play the guitar. Jadi di sini ada perbedaan. Meskipun kalimatnya sama, can you play a guitar? We have to see the context. What is the hearer reaction after this? Sorry. Ya, can you play a guitar? If it is direct speech act, maka dia berfungsi sebagai kalimat tanya. Kalimat tanya ya untuk kalimat tanya, kalimat statement ya untuk kalimat statement. Tetapi kalau yang indirect speech act, kalimat tanya bisa bisa untuk uh, request atau inviting something. Kalimat statement bisa untuk sebagai uh, kalimat menyuruh atau ya untuk menyuruh atau commanding or requesting someone to do something. Nah, itu yang indirect speech act. Jadi ada yang langsung sama seperti apa yang diungkapkan, ada juga yang maknanya terselubung. Contohnya ini ya, can you play a guitar? Kalau yang direct yes or no. Tetapi kalau yang indirect, can you play a guitar? Bisa tidak kamu mainkan gitar untuk saya? Maksudnya seperti itu. Another example There is a husband and also a wife. The husband said, that's the phone. That's the phone. Itu maksudnya adalah dia menunjukkan bahwa, oh ya, phone-nya mungkin ringing. Di kalimat ini adalah statement, dan dia sebenarnya menyuruh si wife untuk mengangkat teleponnya. That's the phone. Maksudnya, please take the call. Tetapi wife-nya menjawab, I am in the bathroom. I am in the bathroom. If you see here, this conversation doesn't have any correlation. Tidak ada relasinya. That's the phone. I am in the bathroom. Tidak ada relasinya. Tetapi kita sebagai hearer, sebagai observer, we can directly know that the husband is actually requesting the wife to take the phone, but the wife cannot take the phone because he she is in the bathroom. So she won't her husband to take the phone instead of her. Jadi di sini kita bisa melihat oh di sini that's the phone ini menyuruh menyuruh si wife. Tetapi si wife menolak rejecting that request by saying I am in the bathroom. Di sini juga kemudian kalimat ini menolak sekaligus menyuruh the husband to take the phone instead of her. Gitu ya. Jadi kalau di sini kita lihat oh ya locutionary Locutionary act-nya adalah that's the phone, I am in the bathroom. Locutionary act-nya adalah the husband wants the wife to take the phone. Tetapi the wife-nya rejecting that request. Kemudian justru sebaliknya requesting the husband to take the phone instead of her. Yeah, refusal. Yeah, kalau kita lihat, oh yeah, refusal to comply with the request. So here the, the prelocutionary act-nya adalah Kemungkinan husband yang akan mengangkat teleponnya karena the wife is in the bathroom. So here is how we can analyze a speech act uh, in the conversation. Okay, next exercise. Now think about you. Think uh, this. Try to analyze which one is a locutionary act, which as which one is illocutionary act, and what is the perlocutionary act. Yeah, di sini, yeah. There are conversation between A and B. The A said, "Do you have an umbrella? Do you think it is direct or indirect speech act?" Pikirkan saja menurut kalian. Menurut kalian ini apakah do you have an umbrella? Ini apakah uh, direct speech act atau indirect speech act? Kemudian yang B menjawabnya, "Is it raining?" Apakah hujan? Nah, nah ini maksudnya ini dua conversation ini nyambung atau tidak? Nanti kalian silahkan analisa sendiri uh, untuk uh, element of speech act-nya menurut kalian ini direct atau indirect speech act ah, kah atau kemudian 
locution, perlocution, dan illocutionary act-nya apa saja. Silakan nanti dianalisa sendiri. Kemudian another part of speech, another part of linguistics that we need to know is about politeness. I think we have know about this. So politeness is the awareness of another person face. A face here uh, means refers to the public self image of a person. Yeah. So there are two things, two important factors that uh, that that can be used to to do a politeness. Uh, the first one is age and the second one is power so we we will be very polite to to people who are older than me who are older than us or who have power more power than us kita akan lebih menghormati itu dan menggunakan kalimat yang lebih polite towards the older and the more powerful authority we pay respect since there is a distance towards the same age and power there is no there is a closeness and friendliness for example Excuse me, Mr. Buckingham, can I talk to you for a minute? Hatta, let's see the B. Hey, Bucky, got a minute? Which one do you think is more polite? A or B? Yeah, it is A. Excuse me, Mr. Buckingham, can I talk to you for a minute? Here, by saying Mr. and saying the last name, it is mean. A is really respecting that person by mentioning Mr. and Buckingham and also saying, excuse me, can I talk to you for a minute? Ini dia sangat polite di sini karena mungkin, oh ya, Mr. Buckingham maybe is someone who is powerful, who is someone not familiar with the, the per, with, with A. Sedangkan yang B, hey Bucky, got a minute. Bucky di sini adalah untuk mengatakan Buckingham. Jadi ini... Uh, kata panggilan yang lebih lebih friendly. Nah di sini kita bisa mengatakannya, eh, apakah ini tidak sopan? Kalau dalam konteksnya eh, dalam konteks misalnya eh, ini kita lihat sebagai perbandingan antara yang A dan B, maka yang B ini yang tidak polite. Ini sebenarnya lebih bukannya tidak polite, tetapi ini mungkin ketika dia mengatakan hey bagi God a minute ini Mungkin si speaker dan si hearer itu sudah sangat akrab. Mungkin satu umuran atau teman dekat dan lain sebagainya. So we can say this is ordinary. Yang kedua ini kita bisa mengatakan sebagai ordinary. I'm going to show you some uh, some some uh, example of of research using speech act if you see here kalau kalian lihat di sini ada banyak sekali tema speech act dalam uh, research yang sudah dipublikasikan di berbagai jurnal kalau di sini kalian lihat speech act analysis of Donald Trump speech si dia menganalisa speech act dari speechnya Donald Trump ya yeah. and what what does she found apa yang mereka temukan di sini ketika ada yang mengatakan what time is it What time is it? Kalau literal meaningnya berarti what time is it? Jam berapa sekarang? Oh, sekarang jam 12 misalnya ya. Tetapi kalau pragmatiknya, why are you so late? What time is it? Kenapa kamu sangat terlambat? Jam berapa sekarang? Kemudian the hearer-nya atau responnya akan menjelaskan, well, I'm really sorry because there is a traffic and etc. Nah, itu itu begitu ya. Ada literal meaningnya berarti oh ya makna yang direct speech act-nya adalah literal meaning sedangkan pragmatic meaning-nya adalah yang indirect speech act. Kemudian di sini kalau kalian lihat dia juga menganalisa ada locution, illocution, and perlocutionary act-nya. I have made, I have just made some coffee. Kemudian locutionary act-nya adalah make a statement, an offer, an explanation, or for some other communicative purposes. Kemudian perlocutionary-nya adalah to get the hearer to drink some coffee. Oh, I've just made some coffee. Maksudnya adalah kamu mau coffee, coffee tidak? Saya baru saja buat kopi. Nah, seperti itu. Ini contoh analisa speech act dalam uh, mini research yang mungkin bisa kalian angkat sebagai salah satu uh, tema untuk mini research kalian nanti untuk tugas akhir ya. If you see here there are some speech act classification, ada representative, ada expressive tadi yang sudah saya jelaskan, ada juga directive, ada commissive, declarative and declarative atau declaration ya. Yeah. So you can see there are so many different things. Ada banyak sekali hal yang bisa kalian lakukan dengan tema-tema pragmatik atau tema linguistik lainnya. Ini contoh yang lain. Saya tadi menemukan dua tetapi sebenarnya masih sangat banyak sekali. 
<coughs> an analysis of speak, speech act in the grown-up movies. Nah, di sini dia menganalisa speech act di film. Kalau tadi di di speech by Donald Trump, kalau dia di film. Ya. Kalau kita lihat hasilnya seperti apa, we'll see here, down here. Oh ya, yeah. oh ya, yeah. datanya seperti apa? Oh ternyata dia yang dia analisa adalah illocutionary act-nya. Dan kemudian datanya bagaimana dia menampilkannya? Oh ada uh, ada conversation, lalu diberikan analysis di bawahnya. sih ada conversation or dialogue, diberikan analisis di bawahnya. Data nine and etc. Kemudian dia juga menganalisa oh ya yeah, locutionary act-nya, kemudian dan lain sebagainya. So here. If we see this two, setelah melihat dua contoh penelitian dalam speech act, kalian nanti bisa menganalisa mungkin ya, mengambil tema speech act untuk mini research kalian. Oke, okay. I think that's all from me. Uh, if you have any question about speech act and also pragmatic, please please write down your your question in the comment ya. Yeah? Oke, okay. hmm. maybe that's all. Thank you very much. Let me close. Uh, Okay, see you again in the next video.